Wilco Johnson, Dr. Feelgood musician and Game of Thrones actor, dies at 75. Wilco Johnson, obituary. The filmmaker Julian Temple described the musician Wilco Johnson, who has died age 75, as one of the great English eccentrics, a great national treasure waiting to be discovered. It was thanks partly to Temple's 2009 documentary, Oil City Confidential, which traced the history of the Canvey Island band Dr. Feelgood and Johnson's role in it, that he enjoyed renewed acclaim towards the end of his life. Not that fans of Dr. Feelgood and the band's mid-1970s heyday needed reminding of Johnson's accomplishments. He was never a guitar virtuoso, in the vein of Jeff Beck or Eric Clapton, but he was one of the most distinctive British players in the history of rock and roll. Having perfected a hair-trigger style that combined stark percussive chords with pin-sharp riffs. To that, Johnson added an intimidating stage presence. Invariably clad in a black suit, eyes staring out across the audience like searchlights, he roved around the stage with robotic remorselessness. He developed a tight stage report with the Feel Goods vocalist Lee Brillo, who was helpfully signposted by his contrasting white, or once white at least, suit. Johnson said he felt like a lot of power I had in whatever I was doing was radiating from him. It was their partnership that drove the band to huge success in Britain just before the arrival of punk. Dr. Feelgood launched themselves on the back of the pub rock Vogue. A back-to-basics mix of sweaty rock and rhythm and blues, typified by the likes of Ducks Deluxe and Ian Dury's band Kilburn and the High Roads. It was a refreshing antidote to the somnolent progressive rock of the era. Dr. Feelgood released their debut album, Down by the Jetty, in 1975, containing nine of Johnson's songs, including the singles Rock Said and She Does It Right, neither of which got into the charts. They followed it later that year with Malpractice, which featured several blues and R&B non-originals alongside other batch of Johnson's tunes. One of Johnson's was their third single, Back in the Night, a perennial favorite in live shows. The album gave Dr. Feelgood their first chart position, number 17, and proved influential on New York musicians such as Richard Hell, The Ramones, and Blondie. Since the stage was the natural home for the hard gigging feel goods, it made sense for the next album to be a live recording. Stupidity, 1976, was a mixture of their own songs and cover versions. Not least, Lieber and Stoller's Riot and Cell Block No. 9, which had become the vehicle for a trick by Johnson of mock machine gunning the audience with his guitar. Johnson was adamant that the recording should sound raw and live and should not be tarted up in post-production a stance that paid off when it rocketed to number one. To their own amazement, Dr. Feelgood had become one of the biggest bands in Britain. However, the album Sneaking Suspicion, 1977, proved to be Johnson's swan song with the band, following acrimonious arguments during its recording. In particular, Brillo objected to Johnson's song Paradise, in which the songwriter, who had married Irene Knight when they were both teenagers, admitted that I love two girls, I ain't ashamed. Johnson's erratic and moody behavior while on tour had already caused friction, and he left Dr. Feelgood in April 1977. Sneaking Suspicion reached number 10 on the album chart. And in 1979, the group enjoyed a top 10 singles hit with Milk and Alcohol. But the whirlwind arrival of punk had made them look outmoded. I look back on Dr. Feelgood sometimes and I would do a lot of things differently. Johnson said in 2012, Oh man, I was intolerable. He was born John Wilkinson on Canvey Island, Essex. One of his earliest memories was of the 1953 floods which hit low-lying Canvey badly and caused many deaths. His father, a gas fitter, was a stupid and uneducated and violent person, according to his son, and died when Wilco was a teenager. Canvey became a romantic place in Johnson's mind, with its lonely views of the Thames estuary, overshadowed by the towers and blazing fires of the nearby Shell Haven oil refinery. Johnson and his contemporaries dubbed the area the Thames Delta in an homage to the Mississippi Delta, which spawned the blues musicians they admired. He first began playing the guitar after watching The Shadows on television, then later was inspired by Mick Green, guitarist with John Kidd and the Pirates. 
Green's knack for mixing up lead and rhythm guitar parts had a clear influence on Johnson's technique. Wilco instinctively began to play left-handed, but forced himself to switch to right-handed. When he found out that playing right-handed meant he could not hold a plectrum, he perfected a way of flicking his fingernails across the strings, which helped him play the speedy, slashing rhythms that became his stock in trade. Wilco nurtured academic ambitions alongside musical ones. He attended Westcliff High School for boys. His mother used to scrub floors at the gas company to pay for their grammar school uniforms and went to Newcastle University to study English. He wrote his own poetry and aimed to write novels, though he observed that his appreciation of great literature meant that, quote, presumption of trying it myself is inhibiting. His conversation, which involved much gesticulation and dramatic facial expressions, would often be punctuated by quotes from Blake or Langlid's Piers Plowman, and he taught himself Old Icelandic in order to read the Icelandic sagas. He spent some months teaching English at a secondary school around the time Dr. Feelgood formed, but fell foul of the head teacher because of his long-haired, student-like appearance. Later in life, he developed a keen interest in astronomy and built an observatory on the roof of his home in Westcliff on sea. After university, he traveled overland to India, partly inspired by hearing about his father's experiences in the army on the northwest frontier and soaked up his fair share of opium and eastern mysticism. Returning to Canvey, he played in a jug band with his brother and met Brillo, then using his real surname, Collinson. Future Phil Goods bassist John Sparko Sparks and the group's manager to be Chris Fenwick, who had formed a jug band of their own. Brillo's outfit evolved into an electric R&B band, and they asked Wilco to join them on guitar. In 1971, Dr. Phil Good was born. In his post Phil Good career, Johnson formed a new band, the Solid Senders, which played at the Front Row Festival at the Hope and Anchor Pub in Islington, London, alongside many of the new punk acts. Johnson was surprised and gratified to discover that many punk luminaries, including Joe Strummer and John Lydon, were feel-good fans who'd seen them as an influence. The Solid Senders released an album on Virgin in 1978, but by 1980, Johnson had taken a job with Ian Dury's Blockheads and then formed the Wilco Johnson Band. Over the next 25 years, the unit would release eight albums and an EP, mostly on minor European labels, though their main focus was playing live shows in Europe, Britain, and Japan. Temple's documentary in 2009 had a galvanizing effect on Johnson's profile. He toured supporting the Stranglers in 2011 and played some sellout gigs at the Rhythm and Roots Festival in Kilkenny. In 2012, he published an autobiography, Looking Back on Me, co-authored with Zoe Ho. He was also recruited for the HBO TV show Game of Thrones, appearing in four episodes as the royal executioner, Sir Ilan Payne. This called upon Johnson merely to look sinister and kill people, since Payne had had his tongue cut out and had no dialogue. After being rushed to hospital in South End for an unknown condition, Johnson was diagnosed with incurable pancreatic cancer in January 2013. He reacted with remarkable stoicism. Given 10 months to live, but having declined chemotherapy, which might have given him a few more weeks, he talked frankly about his condition on Radio 4's front row and arranged a string of farewell gigs that March. His philosophical attitude was perhaps shaped by the facts that Irene had died of cancer in 2004, and Johnson had never reconciled himself to her loss. The only time I don't feel heartbroken is when I'm playing, he admitted. Following the tour dates, he teamed up with The Who's Roger Daltrey to make the album Going Back Home 2014, which included favorite Johnson songs from Dr. Feelgood and his solo career. Both artists seemed to be goading each other on, since Johnson's guitar work was as clipped and fiery as it had ever been, while Daltrey hurled himself into the songs with abandon. Daltrey commented that Johnson is one of those British guitarists that only the Brits make. Wilco is a one-off, he really is. The album reached number three in the UK, making it Johnson's highest charting release outside Dr. Feelgood.